Okay, boom. Have a good fucking day podcast. Episode four. Special guest today, my big sister, Carla Pike. Well one babes. Hello. Hello. Um, first and foremost, episode four, congratulations to me and everybody else who has helped and assisted on the podcast. I appreciate it. Um, I've been looking at a few stats on podcasts and the episode numbers that they reach. And there is a stat about reaching. How do you do that? What do you mean? How do you check these things? I, I just go by what people say. I'm not that. Oh, right. Sorry. There's like a, it's something like 74% of podcasts don't reach episode four. Seriously? And then, I can't remember the stat, I, sh- I probably should remember it. And then it's, there's a stat for episode seven and the percentage goes down again. When you reach episode 20, you're in like the 1% Seriously? of podcasts ever created, yeah. What, people just run out of things to talk about or just get bored? Well, I, f- I think there's a few things. I think like being consistent with a podcast is like... Long. obviously 20 guests depending on who you are like how many mm. how many guests can you get on having somewhere to record it having the equipment paying for that if you're working full time and you're trying to do it as a side thing yeah like 20 episodes once a week yeah that is quite editing <laughs> promote do you know what I mean yeah I'm bored already I'm right. <laughs> I've definitely ducked out for episode 3 yeah so so yeah that's going to be cool like once we get to Episode 20, we're literally going to be in the 1% of podcasts ever created. Well, I'm glad to help you with that. I appreciate you, babes. It's a milestone. I don't know what that milestone is, but I will figure it out. (laughs) Right. So, question one is, who are you? Oh, my... That's... (laughs) (laughs) How am I in this question one? I'm like, I don't know. I don't know the answer. Who am I? I'm Carla. I am a mother. I am... Irritated a lot of the time. (laughs) I... (laughs) I am trying my best. I am a business owner. I am... What am I? God, that's actually really good. I don't think anyone's ever asked me that. I'm a many things to many people. Uh I'm stretched very thin. All the time? No, not all the time. Not all the time. Okay. A mother, a business owner, irritated a lot. Yeah. Stretched thin, but not all the time. Not all the time. But I also... I'm, I feel like I'm quite a happy person overall. Mm-hmm. Sometimes. <laughs> well, I mean, it's a, it's a, 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 no one's happy all the time, isn't it? No, no, but I mean, but I'm also like I'm saying, I'm stretching, I'm irritated. I am, but I'm also quite. I think I'm fun. Yeah. I'm quite fun. I'm gonna think about that. I might actually come back to that one. It's quite an interesting uh-huh. question. Okay, that's interesting that you say that. <laughs> if you could go back in time and change something, what would it be? I don't know. Sometimes I think about this and I'm just like, literally, it's the most pointless thing you could ever think about. I try not to do that because yeah. there's so many things I'd like to change. Fair enough. And then it's like, but when you start doing that, then it's, you can't, can you? Yeah. So you're only going to feel That's an interesting depressed. answer. <laughs> and there's 10 different things which I could tell yeah. you. A hundred different things yeah. which I could say. But the fact is you can't, can you? So, yeah. obviously, it's so weird you said that. Even I was driving this morning, I was thinking, what was I thinking about? Oh, if I went back to, what time was I thinking? It's like, well, did you do that all differently? And I was, immediately I was like, can't just stop it. Yeah. There's just no point. However, actually, thinking about it now, I think there is a point. And not necessarily because you would you believe that you can change something, but when we recognise I suppose like if we want to talk about like people dying and stuff like that, that's mm-hmm. one thing. But when it comes down to the things that we've experienced and how we've dealt with certain situations, looking back on it and thinking, Do you know what? I would have changed that about my approach and that's Oh, a hundred percent. There's then lessons in everything. One hundred percent. So that's not necessarily thinking I'm going to change something yeah. different. Because even when um, I was actually speaking to someone about like a falling out that we had ages ago, mm. and then and I was going to start apologising for something, and I was like, actually, I'm actually not going to, because that's actually how I did feel at that time. Yeah. So, But I have learned that actually now, I maybe would have done that differently or that differently. Mm. But at that moment, that is, it is just that is just what it was. Yeah. And it's just acknowledging it and learning from it, rather than thinking, oh, I wish I could. Yeah. What is a revelation or pivotal moment that you've experienced? Oh, it's definitely that I um, am a fixer. Mm. That has been the biggest revelation. And then just seeing my behaviour in certain friendships, relationships, and just being like, and then understanding why I do that mm. or did that. And then trying really hard to not do that. And then I go, you know, like sometimes when I speak to you, I'm like, guess what happened today? And you're like, wow, I've really done that. <laughs> I know, I wouldn't, if this was last year, I wouldn't yeah. have done that. I would have done something. I would have been, that would have been really different. So that is definitely. Um, the biggest revelation of this year is actually looking at how I behave in friendships and relationships. Yeah. 
One hundred percent. That's the biggest um, like revelation of this year. I think I've been trying to sort of learn more about myself and get to know myself better. Um, and I've been reading a lot. I've never really journaled before. Um, I haven't really. I've been doing that a little bit, not a massive mm. amount, but. Um, but this is the first time that I think I've actually taken time to do that. So, and that's the main thing that I've definitely um, like learned about myself. And that was just like, oh my god! And then there was this book. Um, it's uh, the Slumflower, which is like my favorite. You know, when I refer to the book, yeah, it's that one. Everyone needs to read it. And there's like a section, and there's a whole page, and you're just reading it, and you're just like, oh my god. This is exactly what I do <laughs> all the time. And then because you just don't think about it that deeply or how you, but when you have it, someone broken down and it's not even, it's, um, I don't know if you've seen it, but it's not like a big book with like loads and loads of words. It's almost like a, not, kind of like a storybook. It's got loads of bright, bold colours mm. in it and big text. And um, so it's not even like a huge, but this page, I swear to you, I've read it, must have been 20 times. And it every time we're just like, oh my God, it's just, it's just me. Yeah. And, it, and the page is called The Fixer. And it's interesting. <laughs> Fair. What's it called? Archetype. Archetype the Victor. Um, and I think it's interesting when you look at that stuff as well, because we don't... Until you like actively think about this stuff and start looking at why and why do I do this and why do I display these types of behaviours and what type of impact do they have? Mm -hmm. Because you don't... It's, it's rare for either of us in the past for the longest time to even think in those terms yeah, exactly, or even yeah. understand what that terminology means or that, that it's even a thing yeah. do you know what I mean you just go 100%. through life and you just live life and you just yeah. I, I'm just being me yeah and I'm basically I'm always was, I'm always correct as well I was, yeah. just, I was always right obviously always yeah. oh what you mean in terms of 100% how, how you felt about 100% I was right and that's just how it was and it's what it is and I'm yeah. and basically you're just basically wrong yeah. most of the time and I would 100% but now I that as well is looking at that and being like, actually, no, that was that wasn't your best self, or that wasn't actually mm. maybe the right way to do it. And actually, like being critical of yourself and honest, honest, yeah, yeah hundred percent. But then, and then, but being honest, but then also being like nice to yourself too, and just being like, yeah, but and then and then that leads to the next bit. But why did you do that? And then you just mm. go, oh right, yeah, then maybe that's why. Yeah. 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 and you yeah. go a bit like, oh, fuck. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's that, but it's really interesting, but nothing but good comes from it. It can get uncomfortable. Yeah, exactly. And I think, and, it, and it's not about, it's not about like blame or fault or, no. do you know what I mean? It's, it's, it's about just finding that understanding, isn't it? Yeah. And then also coming with all of that is like the whole thing about having compassion for others and for self and like you say, like being kind to yourself and not, Yeah. it's not about beating yourself up because it's, everyone's got stuff. Yeah, of course. Just the mere fact that, that you're thinking about it and looking at it means that you're a million miles ahead of a lot of people. Do you know what I mean? Nice. These questions are good. Are you uh, proud of yourself? <laughs> Hiya. Hiya. <laughs> well, you're question three. Um, <laughs> what is the emotion you experience most often when you first wake up in the morning? Anxiety. Really? <laughs> Normally, is it anxiety? Sometimes, but do you know, no, the anxiety is the wrong word. I get very, I'm also most positive in the morning mm. and most right. And I sort of look around, right, what this is what we're going to do today. It always starts off quite good, mm. but that also does come with a certain level of anxiety because I'm just like, right, I've got this, and then I go with all of the things, but I've got better at yeah, which is what I have. Like, like for example, in the planet, it's like you literally just pick the three and then try and focus on that, but it is definitely. A mixture of anxiety plus okay, now you know how to do this. It's fine. Yeah. Calm down. And then also positive. You can do this. You can do this. Mm. So it's like a mixture. That's generally what I have. And then I go, oh my god, okay, I'm just going to get coffee. Calm down. But that's normally the first few minutes of waking up. Yeah. Is that I sort of look around and think, oh my god, I've got this, 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 this. Normally, just because I've got a lot with the kids, then with my business, then with my job, mm. it's like and each area has such a lot that. And the anxiety just goes like it's literally like, like a roller deck and things when it goes brrr, yeah. I doubt that through all of it all okay. of it okay so is it more it's more around how you're feeling about what needs to be done immediately in this 100 today I wake up like well, what we got to do okay okay it's that enough. yeah yeah so it's not like an overwhelming no 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 no, no, no that, it's that not relates yeah. to something bigger than your day no I think anxiety is probably the wrong word it's okay. more like I think overwhelm is the wrong word too because it's manageable. It's not like a, it's yeah. not that feeling. Like, what's the right word? Um, it's more just like literally like my to-do list is literally flashing like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So there's, there's always 
the, the list is there. And the list is always there, but but I do have more of a positive. But then come like three, four o'clock in the afternoon, it's still there. But mm. I haven't got the same positivity that I've got when I wake up. Mm. By then, I'm just a bit like, yeah, I'm a bit tired now. To be honest, and I go, oh, should we try again tomorrow? <laughs> I get a bit like that. I hear it. And then, but yeah, yeah. that's yeah. probably that's definitely my initial first few minutes of waking up. Have you ever thought about? Um, because obviously, like you say, when you wake up in the morning, it's basically go. Obviously, you've got the kids, you've got Tate, media, mm. school runs, business, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Have you thought about or ever tried? Or you, I know, actually, I know you have. Like waking up slightly earlier and having some time to yourself. I, I, love, I love people that don't have kids that like to jump on No, but stuff. you've done this, though. Yes, I know I've done this. It just doesn't <laughs> work like this. Have you ever thought about this? <laughs> <laughs> Doing things, stretching and mindful breathing. <laughs> Only people without kids say shit like that. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah, of course I thought about it. <laughs> <laughs> but you have though. You've woken up like some. There was a period when you were waking up at like six or five, half five, and you was going to train, and you would, and Tate would be sleeping, and you would come back, so you would have a good hour and a half. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I've, and I've and that. and how was that like? impactful did you notice any that makes no difference that first five minutes of waking up of that yeah. feeling it doesn't matter what, what i'm doing that but, but what. i'm also i'm just talking about with obviously when you do that you're not immediately jumping into doing stuff for other people or doing stuff for your business or doing stuff for work you, you are from the moment you open your eyeballs in your head yeah but i'm, I'm i hear that but I, I, I mean in terms of if you're waking up and you're going to the gym and you're and you're just it's just you mm. your coffee in your car do you know what i'm saying and i and I know this, that you don't get a lot of alone time in it. And I'm just yeah. wondering whether or not that hour or two hours in the morning would make a difference to when you then come back home or is it just the same as... No, it's just the same because when I'm making the coffee, when I'm getting my clothes out, when I'm driving yeah. there, it's, yeah. it's already started. Fair. Fair. But no, but you're right. Just doing that exercise in the morning, even when I go and train with Nat now at like nine o'clock, mm. it's like the days that I don't, yeah. completely different day. Um, I do think... I do know... Though, even though I'm not taking the piss out of what you're saying, I absolutely do know that when you do wake up and those times when I don't look at my phone, mm. I do like journaling. I think I've done it like twice. Yeah. <laughs> but no, I did. Do you remember that thing we were doing? The the um the the stretching. What was it? The funk. What was it called? Mo mo you mobility. Say feng shui then, didn't no, it? no, no, no. <laughs> it was like the the something functional stretching. Oh, mobility. Mobility, mobility yeah, stretching. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That. Yeah. I think I did that like three times. Yeah. But when I did that, and then Jen, I was like, oh, God, this is like the great yeah. thing to start. Like, you do feel really good, yeah. but then you just, it, I just, I find it hard to just, I just. I hear you, man. I mean. But it does make a difference. Yeah. If you could teleport to any place, environment, or setting in the world right now, where would you be? And which three people would you take with you? Oh, that pool in Jamaica is like my, literally my favourite place on earth. When I got hypnotised, he said to think of, I had to have like a place that was like your happy place yeah and it was there a hundred percent early in the morning mm. because then it's like there's nobody there and there's this little section it's like and it's really the water's really shallow and you can just like you just sort of walk around in it and it's just oh it's just everything and yeah. the sky everything the sounds everything that's like my favorite place what three people would i take with me <laughs> do i have to take anyone you don't have to mm. no or would then you be alone? That's interesting. Maybe. Yeah, fair. Well, it would depend. I mean... And you prefer... You do prefer pool to sea, innit? 100%. Yeah. That's wild. I like to look at the sea. And yeah. I like to, like, be on a boat. And yeah. I like... But it's so... You get all, like... Your skin gets all okay. dry. And there's sand. And it's okay. messy. And But in smelly. terms of, like... Like... Energetically. Like, sounds. Vibes. Like that type of vibe, like not necessarily getting in, but being next to something. Oh, no, I think I love the sound of the pool. Yeah. I actually do. <laughs> no, seriously. <laughs> the, the chlorine water slapping against the, the tiles. <laughs> no, there's something. I'm trying to think what the sound what is. What noise does a pool I make? Don't... <laughs> like, no, I'm watching. I don't think like the it filter, makes... like whirring away. <laughs> <laughs> does it really make a sound? Does it... That's funny. I don't I think like, pools do make noise, but I think I've got a video. <laughs> We're using the phone. <laughs> I'm going to find it, but I'm sure I've got a video of. Um... Oh no, sorry, I've, I've remembered. It's not that. It's not. That's not what I like about the pool. No, it's not the sound. No, it's the way you know when the light and the way the pool goes uh -huh. all like that. That's what I yeah, love. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That I love. I love. I love. Yeah. yeah I hear that. That's what I meant. I that. And the sea. But no, I do love the sea. But I don't. 
Yeah. I would want you would definitely find me on like a lounger with no sand. I hear you on the I hear you on the sand thing. The sand thing's jarring. Hundred percent. But uh, and you know what it depends on? It depends on the beach in it and the way the beach is set up. Because some beaches are more thoughtful in terms of like people. Thoughtful, but thoughtful. Do you know what I mean? But like, there's one in Turkey and they've got like, it, it was super chill. There's a nice bar, a nice restaurant. All of the, the bar was like decked. There's lots of pathways that go to the, decking pathways that go to the showers and the yeah. toilets. And then there's beach showers. Yes, yeah, see toilets. And even yeah. the toilet, it's like yeah. skank. Yeah. I hate you. It's just... <laughs> okay, what was the last thing you ate? I just had a protein shake on the way here with all of my goodness inside, which is the best thing I put in my body every day. What was in it? Sea moss. My green greens, you know, like the greens? I don't know what they're called. What, the powder? I don't know, I'll just borrow the shit from the internet that says I'm going to be like really healthy. Yeah, the powder. Yeah. And then my vegan protein, and then frozen half a banana, spinach. Mm -hmm. What's that? Turmeric super blend. What else do I put in it? Do you know what? And I knew this, but it, I got reminded of this the other day, you know, and it might. Oh, you're going to tell me something you've seen on YouTube, which is like. <laughs> Tell me why I'm wasting my money. Go ahead. No, no, no. You're not wasting your money. However, when you blend a banana, yeah, the calories in it are 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 way worse than the calories in like a chocolate a, bar. A solid, no, a solid banana. Really? Because it's blended. How? Um, it's because of the way that the sugar's delivered, isn't it? Because it's in liquid form. Okay. The way you absorb okay, it. Okay. Do you know what I do at this stage? <laughs> At this age, you know we're talking about overwhelming the way your brain works. There's certain things, there's certain levels. It is a banana. So whether it's frozen, mashed, pureed, <coughs> put in my Nutribullet or what, it's a banana. Therefore, I feel like it's better than say I don't know half a bottle of gin at nine o'clock in the morning. So way the sugar's delivered, there's a certain level that I choose. I make a conscious decision that I'm not taking my brain there. Okay. But thank you Fair for the information. <laughs> Fair. <laughs> okay, this was a nicer question. Oh no, okay, I don't know what you're Okay, no, let's do this one first. Uh, what was the last thing you did for you? I'm actually getting really good, quite good at this, to be honest mm -hmm. with you. Um, I'm trying to think what the last of it was. I've done quite a few things recently. I just treated myself to the Caroline Hirons skincare kit I don't really need most of it but I was like I actually really want this and I haven't bought myself anything for ages so buying stuff for myself I don't do that very much but I do do things like oh should we not go and do that stuff in the what you should be doing should we just sit here and watch an episode of this while Tate's out and then just doing that and just sitting um I'm, that's something that I do for myself because if I do do that then I'm just better at yeah life basically and that's in, an incredible thing, I think, to even be able to identify, like even something small like that. And yeah. uh, like s s taking the time to like do something that you enjoy by yourself and understanding that it impacts 100%. who you are Definitely. for the people that rely 100%. on you. So you'd think, oh, you've and then before I'd have been, oh God, you've been so lazy, you've wasted the whole, you've wasted two hours doing like, but now I'm like, absolutely not. Mm. It's almost like a, a, a plan it in. Mm. So, and then I'm like, I'm gonna sit here and do absolutely nothing until midday. And then I'm gonna go. Yeah, and there's a big difference between those two things, like not doing nothing and then calling yourself lazy. Yep. And then actually finding, realizing that there's value in that, 100%. and that actually that time is needed in turn, and in turn the impact that it's gonna have on the rest of my day or my afternoon 100%. is gonna be positive. Because I imagine if you didn't know that, you would take the time without thinking about it, and then call yourself lazy. And then it has a double negative impact on exactly. your afternoon. So exactly. it's like a more of a conscious... And I've noticed that so much with people around me over the years. And I've really, I've noticed it more and more and that we all do it. And it's like the way you talk to yourself is so important. Like one of my friends is like, I'm just trying to say this without like, it's just like <laughs> literally it's the way they say about like their body and how mm. they're so fat and they're so... And you're just like, oh my God. And it's like, it literally makes me like, why you talk? Yeah. Don't talk to yourself like that. That is like yeah. the worst thing you can ever, yeah. like you have to, and it, cause it, it will, immediately you're just like that. And, every, and then everything else is a bit just like, oh. and you have to, so it's the same thing for telling yourself that you're lazy or um, 
you should have done this or you should have done that. It's almost like, and there was some, was it a podcast? I can't remember which one it was now. And it was something about those things that you're saying, imagine saying it to a four-year-old. Would you say that to a four-year-old? Oh my God, you're so fat. Exactly. You're so disgusting. Exactly. Look how fat you are. You're like, you wouldn't even that. say it to your friend. No. You wouldn't even say it to someone exactly. you don't like. Exactly. 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 You wouldn't walk up to someone you don't like, at, well, unless you're a proper arsehole. Yeah. And be like, you're fat, like you're, you're fat. ugly, yeah, no. you're lazy, yeah. nobody likes you. Like, you wouldn't. Never. And See, if you wouldn't even say it to someone you don't like, yeah. Um, why the fuck are you saying it to yourself? Yeah. It's actually wild. Yeah. And I've never, and I've definitely done it loads of times. Same. And now, Papa can remember it's like, oh, you looking cute, girl. Yeah, exactly. Like, I was a little, and I'm, even like I'm grabbing my belly, like, oh, yeah, <laughs> got all that. And it's like, and it's just, instead of being like, oh my God, that's yeah. so gross. It's like, yeah. because no good comes from that. You yeah. just end up just feeling, and it's just, it's, you have to be so careful of how you speak to yourself, 100%. And that's one thing I think I do, I try and, um, when I hear people do it, I do try and say, don't do that. Don't talk to yourself like that. Yeah. Like, you're so, don't. That's yeah. horrible. Yeah, like, don't be so you. mean to yourself. Definitely, man. Like, it's, it's double important. And, and like, before, before having an understanding of it again, you don't think about it. Yeah, no. And then the self-talk is just happening. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you're just like, there's this voice in my head and it's saying these things and I'm just along for the ride, isn't it? Yeah. But when you, like, try to take an active role in it, obviously it still happens. But you can actually, like, there are things that you can do, even just to stop in yourself. Or if you've got, like, a little practice that you put in place or whatever, or if you've got affirmations or whatever, yeah. to try and steer your thoughts. And you're aware that negative self-talk is damaging. You can yeah. make an effort to, to steer it, rather than just letting your mind spiral and thinking that's just what happens. Yeah, and it does make such a difference. Mm -hmm. Being aware of that, 100%. Okay, when you're in the shower, do you scrub your legs, feet, and in between your toes? In between my toes? No. No. Scrub? No, tickle. Ah, <laughs> no. Oh, maybe not. No, scrub. maybe not scrub. Wash. Do I wash in between my toes? Do you? Yes. What? Get in. Yes. Oh my god, it's making my toes curl. <laughs> Are you serious? Hundred percent. What do I do? I've got the pink thing, and I just go all over. I suppose I. Don't. Or do you just let the warm, soapy water run down your legs? No, I don't do that. <laughs> but in between my toes ain't dirty. I mean... I mean, I'm going to look. I mean, maybe they don't look They're dirty. Not. My feet are sweaty, innit? Mine, mine aren't. <laughs> my feet never smell. You, I, I don't know if I told you about this before. I did a post about this ages ago on TikTok, innit? And it went mad viral. And, it was, and I was like, look, be honest, innit? Because I think I saw someone talking about it. So I was like, what, what? You don't wash your legs and your feet? And it was like... And so many people were like, no. I, don't, I literally don't wash below my thighs. Because the water runs over. No, but you have to, especially because I showed you, you have to like, exfoliate. Exactly. Like, I'm like, why would you, like, your feet of all things. Feet smell. Why would you not wash your feet? Yeah, no, this, in between the toe thing, it's throwing me though. I definitely get in between every toe. For sure. But sometimes my feet smell, so I'm like, I need to wash my feet. Mm. I definitely don't, like, actively go like, yeah. honestly, that's making me <laughs> like that. <laughs> I definitely don't do that. Do people do that? Do you other guests do that? In between their toes? I mean, I do. No, any, anyone yeah. else? You found anyone else? Uh, yeah, I mean, but I've found a spectrum. I found people that don't touch their feet ever. And then... Imagine admitting oh, that. I mean, at least I lie, innit? Like... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, people was just... Well, I have people messaging me, yeah? And I've made, I've made like, similar videos. Like, and this was probably a year and a half ago I made the first video. I have people in my DMs now saying to me, I wash my feet because of you. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god that's mad is this it? on tiktok yeah oh I yeah, don't yeah, really, yeah. I don't really use that one tiktok's good man and you know like what's interesting about it now is because they're they're really like trying to be like the way that youtube's like a search engine like if you want to learn something most people are like the things i've learned on youtube is unbelievable exactly. i've literally fixed dishwashers yeah exactly but with tiktok now say for instance i was looking for my birthday venue if pretty much any venue you can think of because you know you go online and you look at reviews and blah 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 mm. and stars and you have to read it if you go on TikTok and put in any pretty much any venue oh yeah I would never think to do that but that's right. true and then you've also got an instant video of what it looks like you can check the ambiance exactly. check the lighting rather and you than can see, just the, like... see the food and you know and people are panning yeah. these are the toilets blah 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 and there's so many videos for every single yeah. restaurant rather than just like obviously like the official pictures of the empty restaurant you can't actually really get a exactly. sense of what it's like exactly exactly and then you find people who like, oh, I think me and you are on a similar wave. Like, I'll follow you. You're cool, just yeah. like me. <laughs> Is that what you think? <laughs> You're a dickhead. 
<laughs> okay. Can you share a time that you got in trouble as a kid that I don't know about? That you don't know about? Yeah. And I probably know most things, but is there... I feel like most of the things you got in trouble for were pretty fucking well documented. <laughs> yeah. alright cool here's a better question which thing that you got in trouble for felt the most like when you get in trouble when you're young like sometimes it feels like world ending innit like which one felt like the most dramatic and the most like fuck I'm in trouble oh when I got drunk before school <laughs> that was bad that I was, was well. shitting myself yeah. right so I know the story tell the story please god yeah. yeah it was that peach wine i think it's called peach thunder yeah anyway see so yeah, it was my 15th birthday and then we decided that's yeah you know the joke it joke the joke is jay <laughs> king i hope jay king watches this it was jay king's idea yeah. and he didn't even come <laughs> so then we all met so did you organize it the night before it was organized what, we what? went yes yeah. i think even days in advance yeah. we went to the shop there's a little shop in um lewisham under the bridge you take your tire off walking there they'd serve you yeah so we went in there, it was prepped, it had to be. We were drinking yeah. at eight o'clock in the morning. Yeah, and then yeah. we went and we met at eight o'clock in the morning and started drinking. And we thought this was fantastic. And where were you? At New Crossgate train station. <laughs> like under the stairs. And there's teachers getting off of the train. What? what right in front of Proud me? Proud got off, looked right in my eyes. And which, I thought I was teacher? bad. Proud the, 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 the um, German, German one. <laughs> the one that banned me from taking what? my German GCSE. She banned me, you know? What, because of that? No, because oh, I went else. in. Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay, so you're at New Crossgate Station. You're drinking MD Twenty Twenty or something like peach, that. Peach. Um, I think it's peach thunder. I can't even smell that now. German teacher gets off the train. You're still drinking. Yeah. Don't care. You're going to school drunk, thinking yeah, we're bad because we're drunk. <laughs> and then. <laughs> then puked up in graphics all over the floor. Oh, so you did make it past registration? Oh yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what lesson did you get to? Period I one. I don't know if that was my first. Or so. I feel like no, I feel like I got a couple of hours in. I'm getting this all muddled up. I was even food technology first, I think. And I'm sure I got called out by Miss Pike. Do you remember there's a teacher called Miss Pike? Yeah, yeah, I used to like Miss Pike. Yeah, she was wicked. And it was the same spelling as well. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, no, I loved her. And then, but, uh, yeah, and then I remember just being in, I think it's called, yeah, it was graphics in the technology block. Mm. And then just literally sitting just like this table and just being like, and then just literally putting my head between my, like, literally, and just went, yeah. You puked up in the classroom? In the, yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And I remember Natalie Scott was next to it. She was just like... Wow. Yeah. And you then, must have been proper paralytic. Didn't eat like, nothing. Just drinking peach wine, that's Jamie. That's funny. Happy birthday. What's a prick? <laughs> yeah, there was like nine of us, I think. Yeah, so basically, yeah, we all got suspended. I only got suspended for one day, so I got suspended twice. You only got suspended for one day? Yeah, one day. So I got suspended on my birthday one day, and I got suspended on Friday the 13th for one day. What? And yeah, then you it was went only straight back day. to school? I think so the next day, so I had to go home. Yeah. The next day. That's off, mental. And then went back in. How long did JJ just get suspended for? Four days. Anyway, don't even start looking at that. <laughs> um, and yeah, for nothing close to that, that's 10 times worse what I did. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, that's ridiculous. Literally went into school that's wasted. Wild. One day. Yeah. Hmm. And then, yeah. I was convinced it was like a week. Did that go mad? Well, no. Do you know what happened with that though? So I went home. And I was shitting myself. And it was my birthday. Yeah, it's so literally were. birthday got cancelled. Was it on the day of your on birthday? On the day. Such a mad thing to I do. I know. Went home. <laughs> everything cancelled. Had to like tell, like obviously tell mum, dad came round. Um, yeah, I was in so much trouble. And then they weren't sure what to do. They were discussing the punishment. And I'll never forget. And then she rang Patrick's mum and then they had a conversation. I think, um, I'm sure it was Patrick's mum. And they both agreed. I think mum was going to go for about a one or two week, like being grounded or whatever. Mm. And then come off the phone, she's like, we've decided a month. And I was like, <laughs> that cheers, Belinda. <laughs> like, like. <laughs> and, then, and then there's a picture of me, Patrick and Laura Town, all in like, we didn't really wear suits, just getting suits, yeah, age 15, yeah, 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 yeah. in a suit, where are you going? Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> suits and loafers. Yeah. And then we went out a month after my birthday for my birthday to that oh, okay. Rainforest Cafe, whatever it's called, because of, we all got uh, grounded. But I think that was the most... I was really like, oh, that is literally... And obviously you felt sick and I felt hungover a lot. Yeah, yeah, I don't know if you yeah. feel hungover at that age, but I felt ill, innit? Yeah. And it's like, why have I done this? That is funny. Yeah, I was really scared that day. How would you describe our sibling dynamic in three words? I don't really know the answer to this question, either. I know, it's know, quite so hard, hard one, isn't it? I was interested to see what you were saying. I'd say... Cackling... 
hundred percent. Hundred percent. It's definitely one of them. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sipping dynamic. I, th- I feel like I've got a bond with you like I haven't got with anyone else in the whole world. 100%. Definitely. I always find it interesting when people comment on it because I don't think about it. Mm. But then when like, like Artemis refers to us, she's like, you lot are twins, bro. <laughs> That's what she says. She's like, what are you talking about? Like, you lot are twins. Like, I was like, is it? I don't think so. I don't think, I don't no. think like that at all. But I think a lot of people, like especially like people who observe us, who don't know us well, but know us. Yeah. Like... That, uh, or people that know me and maybe have met you once or twice but then obviously they kind of their their idea of our relationship is more probably from online and like yeah. a lot of people like comment on like just feeling it through that yeah no is, I do say, I do. people do say to me I really, like, you and your brother have got a really good yeah. relationship I suppose we do I suppose we do more and more as time's gone on I think we got closer since mum died definitely 100% mm. but I'd say we've always got quite well and always been pretty close I think yeah. no we've all definitely yeah. Definitely. Um, but now I don't know how I'll describe our oh, in three words. Well, quite... I think cackling, close. Obviously. Yeah. Obviously, they're two positive things. What like it, we don't argue anywhere near as much as we used to. No, but there's probably not many people that can piss me off how you piss me off. <laughs> yeah, same. Yeah. <laughs> like, it gets like, wild. People think... just know to step back and not even try and cut. Like, yeah. I think it's a bit more extreme for you to be fair than it is for me. What do you mean? Like the level at which I can annoy you. I mean, you're fucking annoying, isn't it? But you're I just, not. I just, I, I don't, I don't get annoyed about life as much as you do. Yeah, you yeah. can really aggravate me. <laughs> Definitely. Okay, let's move on. <laughs> um, what is the most valuable question that you've learned from being a sibling? Valuable question. Lesson. Lesson. Valuable lesson I've learned. I don't really know a lesson from mm. being a sibling. I don't know. I feel like you lot learned from me. <laughs> <laughs> what are you teaching me? It's lessons in everything, darling. <laughs> uh, don't know. Patience. Patience. I haven't. <laughs> no, I haven't learned that. None. I don't have that. No. Nope. <laughs> have you taught me? Or by being a sibling? But, I mean, yeah, by, yeah. By it's being not like something. Teaching that sitting down and teaching someone something. I just think through being, a, 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 and, and also I think this is an interesting thing because you're the only one out of the four of us who is the eldest. Do you know what I mean? The art of manipulation. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! I learned that from young. <laughs> this fool. <laughs> You might as well tell the sweet story quickly then. The sweet story? Yeah. Oh, with the sweet. So when um, our dad used to give us... Um, when he used to go to the pet station, it was like yeah. Rolos or like... Um, I always remember... Chew it. Or whatever. But it was one of the things where it was like, there was like, you know, like... You not could like take a bar, one out of the take top, one yeah. Out, yeah. And then dad would be like... You only had one, or you only had two, or whatever. Ridiculous. Who takes kids? We need to ask him about this, you know, because we never saw the pack after that day. He'd buy it. Yeah. We were allowed one or two... We never got it back to have three or four. No, facts. Fact. Well, I, 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 never, I never got anything. Oh, we always got Rolos. Do you remember Rolos? I think it's, I think it's because he used to eat them. It must have been. It's his favourite thing. And fruit pastels. We need to have this conversation. This is going to... Should we get him on, on the next episode? Yeah. Oh, my God. Could you imagine? <laughs> could turn it into black table talk. Oh, my <laughs> God. Do you know what I was going to say to you, though? I would actually like to do that because I saw this thing on Instagram. Sorry about your questions. No, that's fine. I saw this thing on Instagram. It was like five questions... You should, everyone should ask their mum before it's too late. Mm. And I was literally, I was like, oh my God. And I was like, oh. But actually, I kind of knew like three of the answers. Or I could kind of work out, I think, what it would have been. I meant to save it, actually. I meant to, um, but I don't think I did. I'll, I'll find it again. It's, it's one of those things. It's like the audios. It's, yeah. it's like going around. Um, but like one of them was like, what's your favourite memory of us, mm. of me, and, and, and little things like that. And oh, I was thinking, oh, really I know. Yeah. And I was like, I wonder what she would have said to that. Fuck. I know. I think, though... I, it might not be the favourite memory, but I always remember her saying she used to just love hearing, uh, like, if she was in the kitchen and we, me or you, were in the living room and we were laughing. Oh, really? Yeah, I don't yeah, remember. Yeah, I like yeah. that. I remember I was in there watching something. I was on my own and I was busting up. And she came in. She said, such weirdo. a lovely noise. <laughs> <laughs> just on your own. Just... <laughs> I, it's a, isn't it a weird experience when you, when, you, when you laugh on your own? Not a weird experience. But like, 
Like, see if you're watching something funny. Like, I'll bust up when yeah. I'm on my own. I laugh about it quite yeah, a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, I think it's dope. I think some people don't do no, that. No, I do it all the time. Yeah. And sometimes 100%. I make myself yeah. laugh, and I'm just like, and sometimes, and sometimes I go to put something on Instagram because you know, like on my on my private Instagram, I'm just like chatting rubbish on there, whatever. And sometimes the thing is so bad that yeah. I can't, I don't, <laughs> I don't post it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's like I just record it, and I'm just cracking just up, like, just watch like I'm watching, but and then it just plays. Like, oh, God, you're fucking funny, you are, you know, bitch. <laughs> And I'm like, no, that's too much, so we can't share that one. Come on. <laughs> but yeah, I'll giggle about it all the way home. I'll get little flashbacks. I came off your question though, sorry. Well, I forgot what it was now. Oh yeah, manipulation. That was it with the yeah. sweets. So then oh, yeah. you would, um, we'd have like one or two each. We'd both be sitting in the back of the car. We'd both be sitting in the back of the car. The one I really remember is actually in the garden, the Dad's garden. Oh. And then, um, I mean, like, give me one of yours. Give me one of your Rolos. You'd be like, no, but that was like, literally, you must have been four. I think like four and six we must have been. We're probably little... Give me one. <laughs> <laughs> and then they'd be like, no, we're not allowed. We're not. It's like, I won't tell if dad's, if, I can't remember, you know, if dad, um, if dad says anything, I'll tell him it's me. Don't worry. Just give me one or give me two or whatever. Then you like, give it to me. And then dad comes over, oh, why have you eaten more than two? Like, they obviously started yeah. having a go at you. And I was like, don't, Jamie ate them. And then you'd be like, yeah, dad, I did. It was me. I ate them. I'm thinking, you fool. Oh, what a pussy. What right? a dickhead. <laughs> And then from that moment on, I was like, fantastic. <laughs> this boy's stupid. Oh, He's fuck stupid, it. stupid. <laughs> so, what a yeah. team. I don't know if you fell for it after that, to be honest. I just really remember that one. But you definitely did used to like, be like, go on. Oh, I, I definitely like. No, no. <laughs> if you could trade places with me for a day, what is the first thing that you would do? Trade your places with what if I could be you for a day? Yeah. Hmm. I'm gonna try and flip it now. If I could be you for a day, what would I do? Do you know what I would probably do? I would probably just do your day so that I could like get it. Yeah, I was actually thinking about what you I think I'd quite like to do like your day as well, just yeah. to see what that's just like. Yeah. <laughs> For a change, just take a few, you know, just do that. Like, it's good gym. <laughs> I'd like to do it for a day so I could understand you better and what you're. I mean, I, I mean, I, I get it, but I, I've never lived it. Do you know what I mean? The one thing that I find hilarious, one of my favorite things with you is when, um, if we're out or I've, and I think I've got I've actually got a f picture of it happening is when we was on the boat, it's that thing when we're all like in a really good mood and it's yeah. like the day is just beginning yeah. and you do this little like, and you do this little wiggle <laughs> and then your eyes start twinkling and it's just like, it's almost like, we're, we're like it's like, this is good, this is good, but this is about to get really fun. And there's this moment where your eyes change, all of your friends will know the exact moment I'm talking yeah. about and you could just see it and it's just like, you're about to go. <laughs> yeah. That's funny. Like the really fun, like you're really enjoying it. And it's that beginning bit with the anticipation you know it was on that boat in Croatia yeah. and I've got it on video and then you just and you you do this little wiggle and you just look straight at me and then you was just like this <laughs> and it was like we're gonna have the best day ever, aren't we? It's that. And that's that's one of my favourite things. I love it when you do that. I love that. Yeah. That's quality. That was a good day, mum. That was wicked, that yeah. Was I love that. Day. Oh, I was wasted that day. He was. But it was a, it was a good level though. Like, no, that last hour, the last bit needed to. Uh, it, I went too far for me. Really? Yeah, that's the drunk. That's the drunk. That one drunk day I had last year, and the one drunk day I had this year again was in Croatia. The last day. Uh -huh. <laughs> I haven't drunk wine since. Really? I've not touched white wine since that day. The white wine was nice Delicious, though, wasn't it? But... <laughs> <laughs> It was so good. <laughs> Didn't miss a beat. Boy. <laughs> <laughs> oh fuck! Oh That's god! Funny. What is a secret talent or skill you possess that listeners might not know about? A secret talent. I'm absolutely fantastic at putting together furniture. Like flat pack. Are you? I'm absolutely and I love it as well. Are you actually? Absolutely brilliant at it. <laughs> I am. Okay. That I can competently change a tyre, which I'm trying to teach my daughter to do because you can change a tyre, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. Yeah, me and Lisa know how to do that. She too. definitely does. She literally stood there with her nails, like just. Try, I was like, you need to figure it out. She just stands there. I'm watching you on how to do it because I'm watching you do it. I was like, no, you need to. She's a chief, you know. Yeah, no, she is. But yeah, no, hundred <laughs> percent. I just changed one once in Barbados in the middle of yeah, nowhere. Yeah. yeah. 
Mate, Rager. you have to know her course. What are you doing? Like, excuse me a second, can you help me change my tide? No, we're not doing that. <laughs> Mum made sure that, she's like, you need to know how to do that, you need to know how to drill a hole in the wall, mm. and you need to know how to paint a wall up, hang wallpaper. Mm. Do you remember me? She used to have her as a assistant yeah. to hang wallpaper. But yeah, that was the thing. She's like, they're the three things you have to know as a woman, like, ridiculous. Yeah, fair. What a G. I know. What a G. Um, and this is something, actually, that we've neglected, yeah? So we need to address this, because we've spoken about it before. If we were to embark on a crazy adventure, insert holiday here, what would it be and where would we go? A crazy adventure? I would really want us to go to Costa Rica because that was mum's dream to go to Costa Rica. Me and you? Yeah. Sick. That's where I'd like yeah. to go with you. Because we've spoken a bunch of times about going away together, which I think would be dope. Yeah. <clears throat> and we've half planned it, but we've never done it. Yeah. There, I want to go with you. And also Tuscany. That was a villa in Tuscany. They're the two things that she really mm. wanted to do. So that's what mum, I really want to do both of those things. Do you remember that film? Is it Much Ado About Nothing was filmed there? And it was like, and it was just so beautiful. I remember watching it with her. And then Who's it in just, that? Uh, well, there's loads of Much yeah. Ado. But this particular version was set in Tuscany. It was a um, book, right? It's Shakespeare. Shakespeare? Much Ado About Nothing. Hmm. <laughs> anyway. So... <laughs> Fuck it, ah, fuck it, no. um, I thought it was one of those, um, one of those, like... Period novels. I swear it is. Shakespeare. I thought it was one of them thingy ones where, like, you know, like where rich white people were in like the big garden and that with umbrella. You know? Oh, you mean like Dickens kind of thing? Yeah. Like, yeah, no. No, oh, okay. I do think you, I think you used to grasp me up a little bit. I think you used to grasp me up on things to mum. Did I? I think so. I was a snitch, yeah. A little bit. I think you were a little bit. That's not, that's bad news. No, that's terrible. What did I used to tell of? I don't know. Just things like, oh, we kind of used, like if I had my friends around, some, if mum went out, sometimes I'd have my mates around and we'd like drink like Budweiser in the garden and think we were bad. And I'd tell of you. Yeah, you'd tell. <laughs> no. And little like, snitch, Why are you bro. like that? What are you doing that for? You never trained it's me properly, good, It's not good for you. Oh, I was on that one. Yeah. Uh, I was on that one, innit? I was on mm. that one with mum as well with cigarettes and stuff. Yeah, I remember I was, when I threw mum's 200 snout away. She went mad. In the wheelie bin? Yeah, she went, she went in she there. She lost her fucking bin. Yeah. Oh, did she find them? She turned it upside down and got, the, got them out. I remember it. Because she went so mad. I think you had to eventually tell her. She went that nutty. Yeah. Like, uh, 200 so I, remember snout, being, yeah. I remember her being in the front garden, the wheelie bin really? on its side, getting them out. Or she made you get them out. I can't remember, but I know they I came out. I put I I threw them away too. Did you? I remember when I was younger. I think I was about eight or nine. I was obsessed with that. She was like, do you remember walking through the train when we would board the train to go to Scotland and walking oh, through the smoking, smoking carriage. Smoking carriages. That shit was insane. Yeah. And the people sitting there with their kids. Yeah. Yeah, we used to have to walk through to get to like the yeah, food to cart, innit? Yeah, and then generally she'd leave us on our seats and then she would go to the window, to the window yeah. at the thing so she could have a cigarette. And I, I remember going with her sometimes because you'd just be bored, innit? Yeah, yeah, that's something to do. And those doors on those trains you could you could open at any time. Remember they had the weird like the, the, the uh, handles were like a bone shape and they were like this yes metal. and you yeah. just twist them yeah, yeah. and you yeah, just yeah. open them yeah nuts yeah if we were characters in a sitcom what would our catchphrase be hmm wagwan dickhead <laughs> <laughs> yeah probably would be something like probably, that probably innit it probably would be something like that <laughs> or some variation of how do you see your role as a big sister in terms of providing guidance and support to your younger siblings? And has... Never it... ending! <laughs> and how has it evolved? It hasn't evolved. It's just the same. Will you not just ask me to do all your shit that you can't be bothered to do? <laughs> Basically. Yeah, but... Yeah, fair. God, I'll do that. <laughs> Let's just ask Carla. I can just see you and Danny trying to say, yeah, ask Carla. <laughs> That's basically how Basically. You're talking to Carla. You're talking to Carla. Yeah. Just, I... <laughs> Carla. Basically. Uh, quality. Parking tickets to... I appealed my own parking ticket the other Did day. you? Yeah. Yeah. Chat GPT. <laughs> oh, did you? Oh my God. I'm going to be replaced by Chat GPT. <laughs> oh, praise the Lord. I do hope so. <laughs> Yeah, I did. I haven't had the the results yet, and it was actually for a fucking for congestion job, so I doubt I'm gonna win. But I thought I'd try. What was your defence? Um, were me. 
<laughs> no, because firstly, I asked it. I was like, what's the best argument for, um, <laughs> for repeating? Sorry, so, you uh, dro- <laughs> so let me just get this straight. So you drove into the congestion charge, uh-huh. didn't pay. This and was on, on Tate's birthday, by the way. I completely forgot that Saturdays it was a thing. So you, then you got a fine. Yeah. And then you were like, I don't want to pay this. Yeah. So I'm going to ask chat GPT, what is the best way? Yeah. And then... What's the best reason... To give. To give to appeal... Uh, and what did it a say? Judge thing. And it gave me a list of things. And I was like, okay, that's not going to work. Because I was, it was definitely me. Boom, boom, boom. And then the one, it was the... Um, something along the lines of, and they worded it better than I did. But um, Never. an error in the system. Like, on, on their system. So then, I then said, can you write me a congestion charge appeal using the reasoning that there was an error? Or well, an error, what, on their cameras or something? Uh, in the in the system to process the payment. Oh, so you tried... Oh, right, I see. So you're saying you tried to make pay for the congestion. Yes. And that's what right, I understand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then it gave me a, you know, comprehensive... Oh, that's what... That free, could, if, free I mean, it could work. work. We'll see. Um, I've, there, apparently, there are, like... Like, certain contraventions have codes in it. I think they're, like, the, the stuff on the road, the, the, the congestion charge didn't seem to have one. But when you can find the code, apparently you can put that in and it will explain to you exactly what the parameters are and oh, how to explain it. Oh my God, make sure you let me know how that goes. Yeah. I'd be interested to know about that. 100%. And it can read it and it just breaks down. You have to say this and this is what... If, if you present it like this, then these are the circumstances in which that they'll... That's um, powerful, isn't it? Affirm your appeal or whatever the words is. Yeah. Pretty sick. Well, all the best. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Tell Dad these help with that. He came around the other day with a fucking bucket. Why do you want him to do that? Who, Dad? Yeah, I don't know. Can't you uh... <laughs> make just, it disappear? He's just kind of just threw it on the table. And I don't know what's that. <laughs> this is what I mean. It's what you're all like. It's just like, you know. Uh, do your thing. What do you want him to do? <laughs> I was like, so what was the reason? He's like, I don't know. I was just sat there. I was just there. I was like, all right. So he's like, well, I was only, I would dig out of the car. So basically, he's driven into a car park, and it's one of them ones you can only stay for 20 minutes or something. Mm. I don't know why he sat there for like 40 minutes. Apparently, he's been doing that a lot recently. Oh, he sat there for 40 minutes, yeah. and then he said he was waiting for someone or whatever, I don't mm. know. And then, obviously, he's gone over the time, so now he's got a ticket. So he's just like, what's your, what is the reason I'm going to put on it? What's the reason? This <laughs> you can see he's almost up, but good luck, though. <laughs> I haven't, I haven't even done it actually. I forgot about that. I said, I said Dad, that was really bad. I said, Dad, I don't think I've got time for this. Like, so, so he's, I don't, he's not expecting me to. I don't know. Don't sure, not. Yeah, I need to teach him how to use ChatGPT. Yeah, so that's what I mean. So you, this is this. Good you luck. could take You're this over now. You're better off spending the time on the tickets than trying to teach him how to use ChatGPT, bro. Could you imagine? <laughs> He'd probably love that. Share your thoughts on the concepts of sibling rivalry and how it's affected our relationship. Sibling rivalry. I think if you have a rival with your siblings, I think there's more going on there. That's mm. a bit. I think. I don't feel like I've ever had any rivalry with you ever. No, same. Ever same. on any. Yeah. Even as a kid, I can't think of any time that we've been rivals. No, no I agree. But I then just... that's probably that's probably a testament to our parents, so that they made sure that we weren't that we never were like pit against yeah. each other. It just seems like a quite an odd. Yeah. Um... One thing I do remember, and it's not sibling rivalry at all, but I, it's funny how these things stay with you, because I remember Dad saying to me. You need to get your handwriting more like Carla's. Aww. So, but I can't. <laughs> I can't. Bless it's actually you. upsetting me a little bit saying it, you know. <laughs> I was thinking to myself, but I can't, bro. Like, this is my handwriting, <laughs> isn't it? What do you want me to do, bro? <laughs> and I remember. I, 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 <laughs> have you seen his handwriting? What a pussy on. <laughs> actually, yours and his is quite similar. Yeah. Do you yeah. still write in a couple of letters? Sometimes. Oh, bless you. Yeah, I yeah. That. Do you know what I write in lowercase in birthday cards? Like, I don't, take, like, I don't really take my time with it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, did Dad say that to you? You should speak to him about that. Yeah, maybe I should. Probably and you just, just look at me like, shut yeah, up. Exactly. <laughs> and you deserve it. <laughs> and I, I, I used to remember trying to do my thumb. How you, remember how your thumb used to go? I'm oh sure my God, it's God, it still does. Yeah, it's it embarrassing. Your hand is wicked though. I hate the way my thumb goes. What's a family tradition or memory that you hold particularly dear and would like to pass on to the next generation? Uh, elves. Christmas elves. My favourite thing. I do that and I do it with Wolfie now every year. Elves? The elves come on Christmas Eve, Jamie. I know they didn't come to you. <laughs> your handwriting Oh, what? Shit. We used to get like little things because yes. my handwriting was shit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> See, that's not that's interesting because that's not like a strong memory for me. Oh, I love that. Because Joe, you know I loved it because mum loved it. Yeah. She loved that. 
And I, now I've, I actually genuinely yeah. love it. Because it's like, because Christmas, I've, to be honest, I do like Christmas, but I much prefer the run up to Christmas. Yeah. Like actually, Christmas Day is a bit, not an anticlimax, it's not that, because we always have fun. Yeah. But I have way more fun on the build up to Christmas, mm. and then Christmas Eve is my mm. absolute favourite. Yeah. Fair yeah. enough. Yeah, I love Christmas Eve. Fair enough. So that's the thing, definitely, that I want to, um, that I like to continue. That's just like the one little tradition for sure. Nice. If you could share one piece of wisdom or advice with our listeners, what would it be? And why is it? I don't want to listen to me, darling. One piece of advice. Drink your water. (laughs) Stay in your house. (laughs) Mind your business. (laughs) Fair. Basically, I think that's one of the main. Definitely, say, speaking less. I think. Mm. I'm, some, one 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 just on there. Oh really? Five ones it was. Oh wow. Yeah. One hour, eleven minutes, and eleven seconds. I think that means that your advice is bang on. Fire. <laughs> Listen. That's, sorry to cut you quickly. Something that I saw about angel numbers the other day, because I think often like people Google it in it, and it's like, what does it mean? Blah blah blah. It's like you can find 18 different meanings for the same angel numbers. Yeah. But I saw someone talking about it and he was like, when you see them, try to tap into where your mind was the, just before the yeah, moment yeah, you saw yeah, it. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I try to do that. Yeah, because yeah. I've only just started doing that recently and it's yeah. really interesting. And it's like, okay, there's something about that 100%. that you need to think about or look at. And That's like, like when Tate was in the car. I know it's not angel numbers, but when we mm. were driving here and I was just, I had a fleeting thought about mum. I can't even remember what the thought was, mm. but she was in my back. And then at that moment he said... I love how blue the sky mm. is. I wasn't talking about her yeah. or anything. I was just had a thought and then he said that. That's crazy. Yeah, that's what made me just go, oh, I yeah. love that. And then it just shows that she's like, that's just so her. Like, yeah. And he was really looking and really appreciating and just loving. Like, look how blue it is. And he was describing the blue. And then, but it's also sunny, but it's cold. It's like, yeah. I love it when it's like this. And he really... Noticing the little yeah. things. Yeah, and he really, really like... That's incredible. Yeah. That's something that I really like something that always stands out for me is mm. like just taking the time to like look at things and she would say shit like look how the light is bouncing yeah, off that yeah, or yeah, look yeah. at you know yeah. how the light's coming through the window yeah my mobile phone <laughs> my bitch I've seen the moon <laughs> <laughs> yes, no, I'm so sorry about that because I'm quite into it now I, w- I went hiking the other day to the moon innit I've never yeah, done those yeah, before exactly she must be so disappointed like oh god take these kids but she was just as enthusiastic every single yeah, time yeah she's mad she never cool he remember the problem Like, it's a bird. <laughs> I've been such a sulky teenager. So funny. You so, but look, look, you can see it just comes back every day. Do you know how rare the Robin Redbreast is? I don't just tell the whole story. <laughs> and they come every day. Or there was something about a year or on an anniversary. Or there was something she used to tell us about this Robin. I don't know. Jumper, she used to just get so excited when she saw it. Did you enjoy like going on country walks and stuff? No. You didn't. No. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. But I was, I think I was more like in like nature. But then you're like running around, you find sticks and yeah. swords and all around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. like... <laughs> no, I don't think I did really. Fair. I do though now and I don't do that enough actually. Yeah. yeah, definitely. I think it's something, especially like where you guys live, obviously Beckham Place Park and that, but there's, mm. so, there's a few, there's a few like really nice spots, especially mm. if you go a little bit past Dad's I should just get up a little bit earlier in the morning. Just squeeze that in. <laughs> no, I mean with the kids or we could all go. Yeah, maybe yeah yeah no definitely no I do actually I do actually enjoy doing things like that <laughs> right tell us about your business and what inspired you to start it the circle planner is my business mm. it is a planner now it's other things too but it started off as a planner to basically help you get organized and all of help with overwhelm and get some structure in overwhelm overwhelm is that a word overwhelm help with overwhelm <laughs> <laughs> is that a word yeah I just thought things was like overwhelming or I was overwhelmed. I've never heard anyone use it like that. Help with overwhelm. What? I'm Googling it. Google Okay, Google it. <laughs> Let's everyone stop and pause. Jamie's just gonna Google it. No problem. Ah. Oh overwhelm. <laughs> oh my god. Sometimes you really um Surprise me. What does it mean? What does it mean to be overwhelmed? Don't you need to be overwhelmed? Yeah, no, you'd be overwhelmed, but you can have experience overwhelm. I'm experiencing overwhelm, fair enough. Anyway, the circle planner. The circle planner. So, um, 
Yeah, so then I had this idea and I was like, it actually began... Now, hold on, what was the question? The question was, tell what, me about your business. Tell me about your business, yeah. Yeah, so that's what it is. And now it's developed into, and there's wall planners and there's different types of planners. So it's a planner to help with overwhelm. It's basic, yes. Yeah, so it's basically a diary uh -huh. um, to plan your time and it's to help you set goals, manage um, like healthy habits that you want to adopt. Mm. Um, and just it's just basically to just organise all of the things going around in your brain and then make things much more manageable and achievable and just to basically make you a bit happier. Mm -hmm. That's why, that's what I made it for, and I made it for myself. And you designed it? Yes. Inside out? Inside out. Bang. Because I decided I wanted to sort my life out, and I wanted to lose weight, and I wanted to be much happier, and I wanted to like sort my business out, because I was doing my photography at the time, remember? Mm. And then I wanted to, there were certain things that I wanted to do, I wanted to like pay off some debt, and there's all just all sorts of things, but there were so many things, and it was just felt impossible, like I'm just never... So then it was a normal, you know, January, new year, new, year, new me, <laughs> I'm going to get a planner. Yeah. And then I bought like two or three mm. and I was like, I don't like it. I don't mm. like this. And I'll never forget being in the shower. And then I was like, I'm going to make one. Mm. And I, I, I always, my best, my dad, my best ideas always come in the shower. I hear you on that. Yeah. And then um, I was like, I'm just going to make one. And I'll never forget, I went to the Brookman where I had my birthday this year. Mm. It was that pub I met. Tamsin, Nikki, and Verity for dinner, mm. and I went because um, so yeah. So basically, two of my friends are graphic designers, and then um, I met them. I was like, so well, I'm going to make a planner, and uh, they just looked at me like, huh? I was like, yeah. So I'm going to need some help because <laughs> I haven't got a clue. Yeah. But I literally drew out exactly what I wanted. There's actually a picture of me lying on the floor with like all these. I went and got all these pens from um, uh, W H Smith one day. I never forget it in Bromley, and I sat there and I made. I've still got it, and I've literally it's like it's all like. Um, what are them thick pens called? The start uh... sharpies. Yeah, mm. um, and I've like made, and you can see like the beginnings, and you can compare Have it. You still it's got like... them? Yeah, yeah, I've still got it. Easy. I've still got it. I'll never, I'll always keep that book. We need to, we need to make that into something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll sick. always keep it. Yeah. Um, so it's changed slightly, but you can see that it's a circle planner, mm. and that's almost where the names came from because it was all the tick boxes with the circles, and then uh, anyway, blah blah. So and then I was like, right, so I need some money to start, and then um, did a crowdfund. Um, which I can't believe I did a crowdfund. And weirdly, I don't think I would do it now. I think I'd be too scared to do mm. a crowdfund now. I don't know why. Really? I don't know why. I had it's almost like I had nothing to... Uh, I think it was about 7,000. That's incredible. Considering how bad... That crowdfund was bad, Jamie. What do you mean? Is that the one we made a video for? Yes. It was so bad, we couldn't even use that video. I've still got all of those clips as well, because the outtakes are just brilliant. It was Was that horrendous. when you and Verity were in the kitchen? It was awful. That was funny though. And then, yeah, it was funny. But when I'm trying to literally seriously raise money, it's like I couldn't use this. Mm. So then I had to, that's what I bought that Yeti mic for. Mm. And then I had all these like, mock-ups because the, the book did not exist. It was literally in my brain. Mm. And I had, if you ever see the drawings of how bad this looked, if you saw it, you would not believe that like 300 odd people. And was it, was it obviously some people you knew, but... But most you didn't. Yeah, most I didn't. I, I, and I was literally going into like Facebook groups and mm. saying, you know, I've got crap. But I think people like to get behind a crowdfund. That's incredible. It though. actually is. When now when I think about it, it, that's definitely... I, mean, I went to like a business lunch the other day that Christelle's doing with her new um, uh, Beautiful Connections business mm. stuff, which is incredible what she's going to be doing actually for women in business. But at that, you had to introduce yourself and say like your biggest achievement and mm. I've actually done loads of things since and I've had like these like I've sold like X amount in a day and I've been mm. really proud of it but nothing is more than that is a, it was literally and I wasn't and I was not confident mm. I hate talking in public you know what I'm like mm. I hate I hate I just don't like any of that stuff and I had to put myself out there and ask people to give me money for this idea of something that I had in my head that I hadn't mm. actually made yet so when I actually thought about it, that's actually really cool that's dope I know right and look where you are now I know, so I made, I remember my dad sitting there, my dad gave me his card, I literally, you have to get everyone, I actually want to do like a, a guide to crowdfunding, so I learned such a lot, mm, and at the time idea. I meant to do that, yeah, because the trick is, you need to get all of your friends and family um, to, to pledge early on, like on the first day, um, and then it sort of starts taking on a bit of momentum, like sharing is like super important, mm. but having that, and then you need to have a start, because if it's just on zero, people come look at it and just go, yeah, 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 yeah. so it's like you almost <laughs> have to have like a bit of, a bit yeah. of a push, you just have to just beg, borrow, you know, beg everyone to just help you, basically. But anyway, but yeah, so that's how it began. So there was things in your life that you wanted to organise, and you had planners, and they weren't helping you in the way that you wanted them to. No. So you said, fuck it, I'm going to make fuck my own this. one. this, and then I went and told the girls, and then they looked at me like this. That's dope. Yeah, and then we literally spent the best part of a year designing it. Mm. Um, so yeah, I did, the, had, I think I did the crowdfunding in May, June, and then... 
they arrived. Do you remember that? How close they came to Christmas. Remember you were driving around doing deliveries. Oh yeah. Yeah, because it was like I didn't yeah, have yeah. money to post all the ones yeah. that were in like a ten mile radius. Yeah. You literally. I remember you came one day and you they were all over my living room floor. Yeah. You had like a list. Do you remember we found some apps. I downloaded to do the app yeah that gave so you the best route. Yeah, yeah. And then you went out for like four hours living. Yeah. Dad used to do the same. Yeah. Um, I remember that. Yeah. You got like you like helped me so much. I forgot about that. And How I'll long never was forget that? you were there. This was 29 December 2019. Bro, that feels like ages ago. Yeah, it's 2019. So this was, and then I'll never forget, and I'd set the website up, the orders had come, they came so close to Christmas, Mm. and I was panicking, people weren't going to have them before Christmas. Um, And then I'll never, ever, ever forget the first time my Shopify went ding, and then it was like, someone just went on the website, and I was like, I literally get goosebumps thinking about it. And then people were like, what? I don't know who that, and I was like, looking at who are they? Oh my God. And it was like, (laughs) yeah, someone just like found it. That's insane. Yeah. And they'd, they'd obviously heard about it from the crowdfunding, yeah. Wasn't it? But they then went on and was like, actually, I'm going to buy one of these, and then they did. I'll That's never dope. forget that, yeah. And I imagine a lot of people who you don't know who supported your crowdfund are probably still buying Circle Planets today. Yeah, they do. And then what's cool in Shopify is you can see, like, it says how many orders, and there's some people that are up to like eight, nine, ten orders. Yeah. So it's like, so they don't just get the. You should. Get you should get... create something. You know, I don't know what it is that you that you go and find out who the people are who. I know them. I was like, I feel like we're friends. Yeah. And loads of them share stuff online. So it's like, okay. so there's like, there's literally about 15 people I could tell you right now that I speak to on a regular basis. And they always mention, I've gone for this colour this year, this colour that year. Uh-huh. Sometimes people DM me and tell me stuff about what they've, you know, okay. what it's helped them okay. with. So it, there is like an actual yeah. community. So yeah. no, it's really cool. Because they would be really good people to potentially talk to, like, in terms of development and stuff. No, 100%. And that's what I wanted to get down to come to Asher's studio. I wanted to get a table like this and I wanted to get like 15 okay. of these women around the table. Me and you are on exactly the same page. Yeah, that's I was just I've, thinking I've been wanting that you to need do to do this. an event yeah. and invite these people mm-hmm. and do something. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that would be sick. Okay, what niche or industry does your business operate in and what sets it apart from others in its field? I think what I think sets it apart, which is what I really wanted, I didn't want it to be like, I hate those ones that have got like, you know, like little glasses of water and you've got to drink eight and you've got to tick them off. Like when there's too much detail, don't tell me to drink eight glasses of water mm. because that's, I'm aggravated yeah. because actually I do it by say litres. I drink two litres a day or yeah. whatever. And don't tell me to drink eight because I want to drink... Do you see what I mean? Yeah. So some of them are just too detailed and they ask you for too much. Mm. So I think the difference with the circle plan is it's kind of like an in-between... Um, it's giving you the structure, basically, to put as much detail as you want in it. Mm. So then you can you can specify and then you can use the list for certain things. So it's enough that you not... You know those ones that you make your own one? You literally design your own. You literally just get like a dot grid... Okay. Yes, yeah, so there's lots of people that do that and then they take lots of time and design it exactly how they want. So it's kind of like that, but it gives you enough of the foundation. It puts in all of the dates in, but it's just there's lots of spaces and then people use them so differently and that's mm. what I love and that's what I think makes it different. That's interesting. So it's not like you're not locked into a certain way of thinking. No. And people, like you said, no. depending on what people are doing and the type of people that they are. Yeah. It, the, the plan is completely you can use adaptable it. Exactly. to different So there's like almost like prompts and there's boxes and I suggest that you use that for like the best thing. Like for example, Verity, some of the box she just crosses, she doesn't use it. And mm. I, oh, I use that for that and I find mm. that so interesting. Yeah. That's what I put in there. And then some people use it to like track moods. There's people that use it, that lady who's got, um, I can't remember what um, personality, but she has like a multiple... Um, like personality, I can't remember. Um, dis- oh. dis- I can D I D. I can't remember what it I stands for. I remember you for. telling dis- me about this. Lady. Yeah, and then she uses it to track, to track mm. that, and to track the. Pers- it's so interesting. Yeah. yeah. So basically, what it is, it's a, it's some, it's a tool that I've made for myself, and then it's just amazing how many other people find it super helpful too. Mm. And then when I use it, I just feel everything's just so much more manageable and the fact that you use it as well is like a testament in it like you've obviously designed it for yourself but like years yeah, someone later, asked me this the other day on, yeah. on, on Instagram like do you actually use it's like literally that's why like, yeah. it's, it's, I literally made it for myself I love that um, but yeah it does, make, it does just make such a difference in um, how things get done and just getting literally getting it out of your head and then some people are into more digital um, planning but if, if sort of pen and paper is more I didn't even realise that I was a pen and paper mm. planner but it's just literally I, sometimes I don't use the times it's literally sometimes each day is literally just a to-do list mm. but then you can just put it in but you can see your whole week then and then you can put your appointments in between and then you've got a little reminder up here of like right the top three things I'm focusing on this week and even just taking that minute to think right what are the three things 
but if I can get that done by Friday, that's going to be, mm. this is what. And that could be like literally as something like sorting out Tate's wardrobe because it drives me nuts. Even just putting that on, on there as like one of those things to do that week. It might not necessarily need to be something to do with like your work or. Mm. Um, yeah, just everything. Whatever everything, but just the on. things that you just want to, but just putting it there. You can see it and it, everything just becomes much easier. What is like one of the most memorable like milestones? Yes, I think selling out definitely that was a massive milestone. Mm. Like, I literally have nothing on the shelf. That's dope. Mm. When, what year was that? I did it, no, I did it the first, the first that first time. Ah. That first, because I, I got... A, that must have been a mental feeling. Yeah, that was wild. It was wild. And I suppose it's like the perfect thing to know, do you know what? This works. But like in terms of a start in a small business and the scale and the success and the profit that you've experienced, and I'm not saying that you're like I'm making millions of pounds, but even turning a profit immediately for small businesses, how I understand it is that's not the norm, in it. No, it's not the norm. There's not most of it just goes back in, but it is definitely growing mm. for sure. Um, so no, it is. Um, I forgot the question now. What's the question? I can't remember. You should be proud of yourself, though. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> what are the roles no, that other people play in terms of the the whole the whole machine? I had the smart. I was literally just. Um, I was speaking to my friend the other day when he came around, and I was like, and I was getting into this thing with Tamsin, and I needed help with this file, and I just he, she's a, she's away, and I just texted like Tamsin. I don't know what this means, and within five minutes, she's like, send me the file, done, sent it back, and it went off to print. So it's mm. like, so, and I was just like, and I'm just saying to him like, my friends are just so amazing. <laughs> But you know, when you just go, no, honestly, like, see, I'm not just being like, yeah, like my friends, like, genuinely, like, they are so clever and so talented in, like, different ways when it comes to, like, whether it's photography mm. or, like, um, even Kev, when it comes to the print and how much he knows so mm. much about printing. Who knew that yeah. printing was such a detailed, like... Do you know what? When I, when I think about that, and they're like, sometimes, I talk about it sometimes with arts or whatever, because, like, her network's really dope, but... It's like, we're lucky, you know, like when you really deep it, like the, even just between me and you, if you think about like the yeah. things and the people that we have around us who are friends and in, in that capacity, but also the things that people are, everything that any, everyone does, they're really good at it. I love that for us. <laughs> I love that for you. <laughs> um, okay. What is the most valuable lesson you've learned as a business owner? Just expect things to go wrong. Aha. Uh -huh. Basically. Aha. Uh -huh. Now, I don't even get... It's almost like... <laughs> just like... Yeah. Obviously, I still cry all the time. You've mm. seen me cry. Alini, every day this summer, I cried. Yeah. But it was also like... There's so much is out of your control. And ev it will... 100%, whatever you thought was going to happen, is not going to happen. Mm. Like, I already... Like, I know something. It's the, the, the next yeah. one's going to go... But... I mean, it'd be alright, wouldn't it? I've we'll figured it out. So I've literally never witnessed, <laughs> never in my the life, level of fuck have I witnessed. <laughs> like you, it gets to a point, and you're like, alright, cool. No, there's nothing else that can happen. There's nothing possibly. There's nothing else that could possibly go wrong at this point. We're good. Yeah. There's another eight things. It's like you would not believe what happened. It's just and like, it's like. And it's whether it's the delivery, whether it's the material, whether it, why have we only got one palette? Where oh. are the other palettes? It's oh in transit. Oh my God, do you remember it's when I only, Germany. I only had small pink ones and small, and it was like, bruv, if you didn't it have it. so random, bruv. It's like, so you've ordered a large yeah. green, but I can't help you until, I don't know, I'm not even sure when. I don't know. <laughs> oh yeah, that was it. The man who was delivering them, he was um, Ahmed. I, I think I've got his number. He's the nicest man you've ever met. But yeah. he he's got very they've got very strict limits on what they can carry on mm. their um, that weight. Yeah. And he was just like, I can't bring more than one pallet a day. So I'm really sorry. So what, what, what do you mean? <laughs> like. Posting so people are seeing that people have got their planners. Got Where's my planner? So that's because you got green. Yeah. <laughs> Friday, don't know. And this maybe. is the thing as well, because obviously where you've grown now, and it's like, um, obviously it still has its personal touch, but there's people who don't know you, they don't know your story, 
They yeah. don't know how you're doing it. No. They don't know where you're doing it from. No. How small the business is how because front facing everything looks so yeah. professional. I love it. It goes hi circle, hi circle team. Yeah. If you just pass this on to your customer services, <laughs> I'm just like Carla's on her phone with Tate screaming in her ear, driving to fucking school. Exactly. Like, ah. Exactly. <laughs> you just go literally. I designed it. I got it. I've raised the money to do, like to do it. When the orders come, obviously I have helped. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. But when it comes to like literally unpacking them, figuring out all the social media customer service packing the order taking the orders to the post office everything everything mm. ordering all the packaging like literally I'm even thinking now I've, I've been thinking while we've been doing this oh, yeah, mm. I need to get the things for that because I need to order the, they must come tomorrow constantly doing yeah. absolutely everything so it's almost like amusing and sometimes you want to reply and just be like it's, it's, it's just literally me I'm so sorry yeah. and then one someone tried to steal from me you know what do you mean this woman I'll never forget her and I was actually really upset about it, but now I realise that there was definitely way more going on there. And then she ordered two planners, sent them to her, and then she sent me some email going, oh, um, do you like, you know, customer services? Um, there seems to be like an error in your packing room, um, and I've ordered, I've opened my, my order, and I've got, it was like two catalogues, like Argos catalogue, basically. I've opened it up. <laughs> she tried to say she got an then, Argos catalogue. Yeah. Yeah. Not knowing that it, the person she's speaking she like, to is the person that packs I every understand. single thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and she's like, obviously, I know that this must have just been oversight. Um, so if you could just please either refund me or send me like a replacement or whatever. And I was just like, no, you're, you're literally lying. I was trying to be nice in the beginning yeah. because this was very early on in my business as well. So you, like, you're, you're terrified the, of bad reviews and yeah. you're terrified of... Um, but obviously, this ain't Amazon. This ain't Amazon. I pack every single yeah, banner. Yeah, and that's what, and that, when I, I said that... I didn't pack an Argos catalogue by mistake. Exactly. <laughs> and then she got really aggressive and then she started writing on, on my Instagram no. saying that I'm a liar, I'm a thief. All, and I literally felt... I'm, I can remember it now. I was so scared thinking people were going to see this. And be, I ended up refunding her. But did I remember, you? Yeah, yeah, I did. I did. I feel like I remember this now. Yeah, hundred yeah. percent. But I definitely just said to her, literally, I know you don't know, take your money. You're literally, you're just a liar and you're a thief. What I a literally, bitch. just literally, this is my business. And it's like, do you know what? You have can't it. Do that, man. Have it. And the joke is, if you'd actually just asked me or said, I would have been like, do you know what? Because you always have those little extra ones. You know, the ones that get damaged and stuff mm. like that. Yeah, exactly. Definitely give them ones exactly. like that away. Or and that's the cheaper. thing as well. Like with people like that and with how what you're like. If someone was to send you a really honest, heartfelt email. 100%. Or whatever, you would sort it out. Yeah, of course. Do you know what I mean? Of because I've, I've, there are planners here. Do you know what I'm saying? Like the imperfect. Yeah, I mean, it might be a bit of a dented edge. But exactly. if you're happy to have it, then of course. Yeah, yeah of course. Hmm. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed them. <laughs> So the most valuable lesson is knowing that things are going to fuck up. 100%. Man. And then it, it doesn't, Expecting it doesn't hurt as bad. Said, yeah. you, don't sit there, mm. you don't waste time going, why did that yeah. happen to me? Which I'd spent quite a lot of time mm. doing. This year, I've got so much better with that. Yeah. Because you, you have to be flexible, innit? And you have to be able to pivot. And it's like, this is what it is. Yeah. What tools are available to me? And how yeah. can I make this work? Yeah. And there's and it just and then I had the, that was the biggest test and I'd always kind of got there and then this summer was the biggest test ever mm. of that and it was awful but I just at no point did I think I'm not good no a few points I was just like fuck this yeah. I mean <laughs> at most points but, but you but you moved but through at it. most hundred percent it was like we have we absolutely just have to find have to yeah. figure it out I've got to figure it out and again this summer was one of the ones man where it was I like, was wild. every time I spoke to you I was like this is nuts there's just was... another thing another thing yeah, another thing really but look difficult. though but you got there. Yeah. And every time I spoke to you, I'd be like, cool, but you got this. You got yeah, this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How can I help? You got this. Yeah. And and you got there. Yeah, it was and you have all these cheerleaders that like, and you can just the amount of hours I spent like on FaceTime to people just yeah. in there. And shout out Dan, just, to be fair. Oh, uh, he was in, I could never in a million years have done that without yeah. Daniel. He was incredible. Love that. And that's one of the first times that I've let people help me with my business as well mm. properly. Mm. Like he like at that ground level. That's Sometimes something I need that, you've help. Worked, that you've worked on. And I had to learn. Yeah, I had to learn to yeah. let, and just to trust him to just... And there's certain things that he had to learn how to do and then he had to teach me mm. how to do. And whereas before, I'm a bit of a control for it, like every aspect yeah. of it I want control yeah. over. So I had... But because it was impossible to do all of it, and I had to. And then... I think that goes hand in hand with your fixer thing. 100%. Yeah. 100%. Can you share a memorable customer interaction or feedback that had a significant um, impact on your business? There's just been so many. Just people starting businesses and um, 
getting feeling better about stuff, managing anxiety. There's a lot of people. A lot of people. I think with ADHD, I think it seems I've got quite a few people that have said that they found it super useful. Um, there's so many, honestly. I'm Those to things think of must be one. nice though. When when people reach out to you, and they're very like it's very personal and specific about how they've used yeah. the planner and the impact that it's had on their life. Yeah. And the fact that it's basically made their life better in ways that you didn't even intend the planner exactly. to work. Exactly. And that I get I get messages yeah. like that quite a lot. And that's really that's the best. Mm. I'm like, oh my god, this is so cool. I love this. And it's and also you not only has it done that, but you've actually taken the time to then actually send me a message and mm. tell me that. So I think there must be more people as well that one hundred percent. So I just think this is like really cool. That could be an interesting thing for you to do online, you know. Is like I'm super interested in how you guys are using the planner. You've probably done something similar before. Yeah, no, I, I feel very sweaty. What are your future plans and goals for your business? Where do you see it going? And then we're going to wrap up. This is a very interesting question because I've had revelations. Mm. This might not be the answer that you would expect. Okay. So before, I really wanted to like grow the business. I was like, I think I want to be in like, I want to get the planner in like, you know, John Lewis mm. or, you know, places like that. I really want to, you know, maybe end up getting... Um, premises and uh staff and you know having like imagine having like a marketing department to mm -hmm. like make or do this concept that i'm like really bad at doing and then the other day i was just making i was just in there like in the little workshop room what, garage whatever you want to call it and i was just really thinking like, i actually quite like i feel like i'm entering my soft girl era <laughs> soft girl yeah <laughs> like i just don't think i'm I'm just not as bothered about scaling. It. Scaling. Mm. I think I really quite like what I'm doing, and mm. I think I actually quite. And I know I have a problem with control <laughs> and allowing people to help me. Yeah. And I know if I have someone in, like, even if someone's like Carl's been a few times and you know helping me like pat the paddles, and I'm always looking to make sure you did it right. Yeah. Are you sure it's got enough protection? Are you sure you put the biscuit in instead of just trusting? But anyway. But I was thinking, maybe that's not so bad. Maybe, um, I do actually really enjoy every part of it. And I'm so proud of it. And I love that what it does. And um, and I love how it helps people. And I'm really, really proud of it. And I was thinking, I think I might. I, I don't know if I just quite like this. Mm. I don't know if there needs to be, or what you're going to do next. What you're, mm. I, d I would like to just, there's a few more products that I'd like to do. I'd like to get better at um, social media. I'd like to get better at doing my stop motion stuff. Because I actually enjoy doing that. Mm. But I'm not sure if I'm bothered about Oh, to the moon. I quite like this. I think yeah. I genuinely, I think I want to get, I want to turn what I've got already into like a well-oiled machine. I hear that. And I think I do just quite yeah. like doing it myself, mm. actually. You often hear people talking about the thing that they love and then the, the thing that they love becomes super popular. And then it, it means involving all of these other entities, yeah. corporations, other businesses, going into other stores. And then all of a sudden, the thing that you love is not it's that not thing that anymore. anymore. That's what I mean. Yeah. I'm not sure. I actually love the whole, I, I love the whole process of it mm. and getting the order and like doing the pre-sale mm. and getting nervous, thinking, oh my God, is anyone going to, like the whole thing of it. I don't know. I don't know. It was just the other day, I just realised I'm really content doing this. Right. And I was like, oh, maybe this is... Unfortunately for you, it's going to go to the moon, but we move. <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and it would be amazing, but yeah, but I would be worried if someone else was packing them, have you, have you written the thank you note? Did you, is it, yeah. Have you packaged it up properly? Because I don't want to get them and then it's just, do you know what I mean? Yeah. I, I don't know. I'm not, I don't, yeah. and I think if it did, obviously it would be amazing you know, if you made loads of money off it, but it's never, it, it's never been about money, mm. ever. From the very beginning of this idea, it was literally, I was so miserable and depressed and fed up and I wanted something to help me mm. that is what it's about and that's what it's always been about so mm. yeah so no it's just I just literally just came to it for that and that, when I felt that I felt really like oh I like that I felt really content like this is mm. you could just keep doing this that's a word I've never heard you say before mm. content yeah and that's dope well I'm I think I'm excited to see where it's going to go man because actually witnessing the process yeah and I think it's incredible what you've achieved and Thanks, babe. I think it is gonna to go to the moon babes and I'm genuinely proud of you. Like Thank I think it's you. incredible. Thank you. Well yeah, it's done. pretty cool. Yeah, so no sort of stand by, there's gonna be like a well oiled machine coming up. Okay. Right, to round it off, I wanna ask you to put both hands on your heart. Oh, what's all this for like now? Close your eyes. Um imagine that you don't have a physical body. Or any attachments. Close your eyes. Sorry. Fuck's sake. <laughs> Just relax. Close your eyes. Imagine that you don't have a physical body. 
or any attachments in this physical realm. And I'm going to ask you the first question again. Who are you? Nothing. <laughs> oh, Jamie, I can't be straight. I don't know. Who are you? Oh, God. That's quality. But, but this is what I'm saying. So you see, like, obviously when I asked you the first question, which was who are you? And you went and spoke about... I'm a mother, I'm yeah. a business owner, blah, blah, blah. But you said I've got nothing, no entity, you said I've got nothing. Yeah, so I think maybe I need to rework that. Yeah. But I feel like, can you see like... Yeah, the... yeah, 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 no, it's quite good, yeah, it's quite good. Um... Maybe I don't do the whole, I don't know, maybe I just ask, ask the question again normally. Yeah, because my answer might just be now a baddie. That's who I am. Okay. Actually, that too. Carl, thanks for coming on. Love you to bits. Love you. One more question before you leave. Who are you? We just did that. We did it again. I'm just do another one. Oh. <laughs> so what am I saying now? I don't know. I thought you were going to say I'm a baddie or whatever. No, I'm not going to do that. That's a, dickhead, <laughs> that's a dickhead thing to say. No, who am I? I don't know. A dickhead. You're an amazing sister. Lucky you. Oh, is that who you are? In your in, when you when you really think about it. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Have a good fucking day. Podcast episode four. Carla Pike, thank you very much. Appreciate you very much. Love, love, love. Big up everyone watching. Boom. Thanks, babes. You're welcome. Appreciate you. No worries. I usually give everyone a t-shirt, but I haven't got any. That's so. it. <laughs> Thanks, babes. You're welcome, darling. I'm hot. Thanks, Tate, for being so quiet. I know, right?